In this A3 tutorial, we're going to be looking at power factor correction. And the best way of explaining power factor correction is to look at a simple situation and what's going on, and then go through and work out what's doing. So we're going to do that today by using a single phase system. And we can draw something like that. Here's our supply, which comes over to a load. And there's a simple schematic of our system. And for the purposes of the numbers that we're going to run to help explain it, we're going to assume that it's a 240 volt supply at 50 hertz, and it's going to have a current of 3 amps. So this is the schematic. We need to understand the system from a power engineering point of view, and the easiest way of doing that is to represent it as a power triangle. And there's our triangle. This is our angle theta, our real power is here, our apparent power is here, and our reactive power is there. So there's our basic power triangle. And we can take some existing knowledge into this. We know that power factor is the cosine of that angle. The real power is the voltage times the current times the cosine of the angle, and that's in watts. The reactive power is Vi sine theta, and the unit for that is Vars, or volt amp reactive, and the apparent power, S, is simply Vi. So in order to understand what's going on, we need to be able to represent it here. And we've got enough information here to populate this. We know that S is Vi, which in this case is 240 times 3 which is 720 vars. We know that, well, we need, to, we need to know what the existing power factor for the system is, and we're going to call it, say, 0.8. We'll assume that this system is a power factor of 0.8 lagging. So we know power factor, or we've assumed it for the purposes of this, so therefore we can work out our angle. So therefore our angle is inverse cosine of our power factor, which with a power factor of 0.8 gives us 36.87 degrees. Two hundred and thirty times three times 0.8 will give us our real power, and that is 576 watts. Voltage times current times the sine of that angle will give us 432 vars in this particular situation. In order to address a power factor problem, we must know what the situation is, and here we have it now. We've gone through, taken some basic values out of our schematic, and populated our power factor triangle. We can't do anything without that. The whole objective of power factor correction is to try and adjust this number here. Usually we want to what we call decrease the power factor, which means make that number closer to one. And that, okay, so. We're trying to make it closer to 1. In order to do that, we need to reduce this angle here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to end up with a situation where our triangle will look like this. So this is what we have now. Our objective is a triangle that looks like this, with a much smaller theta much smaller Q, P will be the same, and S will be. So we want to decrease Q, S will be the same, we want to decrease, sorry, P will, we want to, P will be the same, and we want to decrease S. This is our objective. 
So we need to know what, what is our objective. For the purposes of this, we're going to assume that our objective is a power factor of 0.95 lagging. A power factor of 0.95 lagging, using the same method here, gives us an angle of 18.19. So this is what we're trying to achieve. P will stay the same. And so therefore, we now need to find out the value of S and Q to complete our target, our desired power factor triangle. And we, there's various ways we can do that. We can use the, basically using any variation on the soccer tire rule. The soccer tire way is a way of remembering that if we know any two of these four, we can find the others. For example, to start off here, the sine of the angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, I suggest you go off and have a look. I don't have room to go through it right now. So we know our real power, which is our, in terms of our rules down here, this is our adjacent. We know our angle, we need to find Q and S. We can find, for example, starting with S, using these rules here, the, our value of S is P over the cosine of our angle, which is 576 divided by the cosine of our angle, 18.19, oh, which is 0.95. It's the same as our power factor, it's the same number. And that gives us an apparent power of 606. So we can quickly check our calculations here. This is our desired state. Our P is the same as our existing state. Our angle is less. We therefore know that our apparent power has got to be less. So we can look at what we've just calculated, 606, and what we had, 720, and we can see that it's less. So we know we're on the right track with our calculations. We haven't done anything silly or stupid, or made any simple arithmetical errors at this stage. We now know P, theta, and S. We can similarly go through and we can find Q. Again, we could go back to these rules here, or we can use this equation here. They're both going to give us the same answer. Um, I'll use this equation here. So Q is VI, the sine of our new angle. We've already established what VI is. Here it is here. The sine of our angle, our new angle is 18.9. So we can go through and we can solve that. We end up with 189.3. Bars. Again, this number here should be less than this, and it is, so we know we're on the right track there. I'll just fill this out. So, we now know our existing situation and what we're trying to get to. The question arises, how do we get from this to this? The easiest way of doing that is to, what I've said just here, is reduce the value of Q. And that will reduce the theta and therefore reduce the S. How much Q do we need to reduce it by? Well, that's kind of fairly obvious. We need to reduce it by the difference between these two. So, there's two ways of doing that. We can just simply do this, this straightforward calculation here. Four thirty two minus one eighty nine point three, and there's our answer there two hundred and forty two point seven. We'll call this Q correction because that's what we want to change, and that is our existing minus 
our desired 432 minus 189.3 and our solution was 242.7. That's one way of doing it, simply by doing it that way. The other way of doing it is a much quicker way that works off a lot of presumed knowledge. And that says that our is the real power times the tan of our existing angle minus tangent of our desired angle. So what this equation here is basically doing is using these Sokotoa rules to find the difference in these angles and therefore calculate this here. It makes no real difference which method you use. This method here that I went through this way is a little bit more closer to first principles. Using this method here is much quicker. We don't need to find out this, a lot of this sort of stuff. We just need to plug some numbers. So some students prefer this method because it's faster, um, but it, is, it does assume that you know a little bit more about what's going on rather than figuring stuff out. And if you go through and you, you crunch those numbers here, so our power is 576 times the tangent of our existing angle of 36.87 minus the tangent of 18.19, you will end up with the exact same number, 242.7, give or take a few rounding errors. So we now know how much Q is between here, which is our existing situation, and where we want to be. At 189, which is what we've estimated here. This is our what we call our Q correction or whatever. From a power factor triangle point of view, what we're doing is we're adding, we're going to add in the negative of this. So these are all inductive, it's our inductive system, it's a lagging one. So in order to drag this from here, this, this number here, down to there, we need to add in this value here. So we need to add in sorry, 240, write the wrong number, 242.7. We need to add in 242 capacitive vars to compensate our 432 inductive vars to reduce it down to what we are trying to achieve of 189. So we're going to add these in to compensate for this to get it down to here. How do we add in 242 capacitive vars? We need to add in some capacitance. So the question is, how much capacitance? And there's one equation that kind of uh, helps us jump along a little bit here, and it says the amount of capacitive reactance we will need is the square of the voltage over the capacitive reactants we're after. So that's 240 squared divided by 242.7 and that gives us a solution of 237.35 ohms. So we now know how much capacitive reactants we need to give us this to end up with that. From here, this is a good expression, but we still don't know how big our capacitor needs to be. This equation here can equal 
is our equation for capacitive reactants. We can rearrange that. We know what the number 2 is. We know what pi is. We know what the frequency is. 50 hertz. And we know what our capacitive reactance is. We've just calculated it, 237. We can punch the numbers on that. And that comes out with an answer that's in the that's around about 13 microfarads. So we now have a value of capacitance which at 50 hertz will give us a capacitive impedance of 237 ohms, which in itself would provide 242 capacitive vars. We can take that 242 capacitive vars put it into our system, the 242 capacitive vars will offset the 432 inductive vars to give us a net result of 189 inductive vars. 189 inductive vars will give us a power, angle, a power factor of 0.95 and an angle of 18.19. So we can go back to our existing system here and we can simply add in our power factor correction capacitor of 13 microfarads. And we have now gone to this situation here. This will be our power triangle for this system with our 13 microfarads inserted in there at 50 hertz. One just quick final note. It's important to note that the frequency of the system makes a big impression on this because the frequency affects our capacitive reactants, which will affect our vars, which affects our whole system. So our system frequency is quite an important thing. Thanks for watching.